to Chat and Chew with G and Key. Welcome to Chat and Chew with Key and G. I'm G. I'm Key. And this is our guest today, Mr. Brent Lamar Smith. Welcome, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Tell everybody thank hello, you. Brent. Hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Okay. So, Key, do you want to go ahead and tell everybody why we're here? Yes, we have a live guest. I know you guys have seen us before, having bringing in guests via the video. But guess what, guys? We are we have one in the place, a live guest for you guys. And G, we put out there on what our topic was going to be, or you should see it in the notes. But however, we want to talk about the challenges of being a stamp parent. And we have a guest that was willing to share some of the experiences, or they may have gone through or something they know about. So we just wanted to. Get you guys feedback and make sure you guys chime in and let us know what you think about it. While we're waiting for us to come, while we're trying to get all the information together, let us know where you're calling in. But let us know where you're listening from. Talk to us. Let us know. Let, give us your city and state. Hey, so can you guys hear? Uh, I know someone just said what she just said. So we are here with Brent Lamar Smith. And our topic today is why is step parenting so hard? Um, we hear from like the woman's point of view, but the reason that we got Bryn here is because we want to just hear the male perspective of what he thinks some of those challenges are. And we also want children to chime in, you know, we want to ask them, we want to ask them the same questions. Like why, why is it so hard to be raised by a step parent? So that's, that's the reason that we want to, you know, have this conversation and we have our lovely guest here who, who you see is representing the Dallas Cowboys, yes. right? So, Brent, did they win today? Yes, they're the winner. <laughs> well, that's all great. So let's get to it, okay? So drop us a line. Let us know where, you, where, you, um, where you're watching from. We just want to know. We want to introduce ourselves to our new viewers who's just joining us joining us for the first time. We want to say welcome. We promise you won't be disappointed. So let's go right into it, Keith. So, Brent, why do you think it's so hard to be a step parent? Well, I think you're constantly having to uh, learn the individual um, when your step parent is difficult because the opposite parent wants to know do you really have the child best interest at heart? And by being a step parent, you constantly have to prove yourself to me in certain areas to let you know that you really care about that child. So, do you find it difficult being in that position to be a step parent? It can be difficult at times. So, what are some of those challenging times that that you may face as being a stepfather? I'm not sure how old you were when you came into into their lives or anything like that. But what are some of the challenges that you may face, or that you have faced, or that you've had experience with? You talk to other fathers that are step parents, and they're telling you, "Oh, I'm having these problems. Oh, I'm doing this." So, do you guys come together and have conversations as to how you can make it better? Well, I think what some of the deals you face is. Most of the kids are like, you're not my dad, so how can you tell me something? You know, and that that part is real difficult when you trying to let the child know that I'm here for you. Uh, I'm going to be there all the way. Uh, um, and a lot of them don't like you to discipline their child if they don't know if you got the best interest. You know? So do you feel that you're in the middle uh, sometimes it's like a tug of war between maybe the custodial parent versus the stepfather. Do you feel that? Yeah, you always, you always gonna be in the middle to me to a certain degree because sometimes the dad will come in and you know try to pull the weight around just to let you know that he's the father. Uh, and the and the mother as well. Sometimes she's in a hard position as well because she's having to you know choose between you. And the child, you know, sometimes it's a difficult thing, you know. So do you think that, do you think that 
all parents, the custodial parents, the step parents, the people that are engaged that are about to be married. Do you think that some that everyone should sit down at the table and have a conversation? Yes. And, okay. So, Definitely. how do you feel like that conversation should go? Well, you 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 should you should sit down and, and talk with the, um, the, the 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 kids' dad to let them know um, something about you. Let them know what what do you you know what do you want from him as uh, far as we can come together type of thing because we all got to come together because if we come together it'll make that transition much easier so let us call our audience are you guys step parents what are some of the challenges that you're facing if you're a kid that's in this situation what are some of the challenges that you have so we just want you know this is an interactive show where we want feedback, we want you know you guys to talk to us, and we talk back. So please chime in and let us know. Key, go ahead. I'm sorry, I've been taking over the show. Go ahead, Key. It's fine. <laughs> Viewing from the step. Okay. Mm -hmm. Freddie said, "Take out, take out the step, and it may work. Work out better." Okay. So how do you feel it will work out better you take out the step when the person feel that child understands you as the step? Deb said the boundaries, your expectations, the relationship and respect from all adults should be in place while you're dating. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so so Deb, how do you set those boundaries? What what type of conversation should you have? when you know when you're dating what what should you do and freddie you said take the word step out so are you saying that call them a bonus or just get rid of the title altogether and say this is my father this is my mother then how does the biological parents feel about that are they okay with with you calling or with that child calling someone their step parent their step parent mom or dad so brent have you ever been do you know anyone that's in that situation where, you know, everyone gets along, right? The custodial parents, the step parents, and then you all have had a conversation and you sit down and say, okay, this is how it's going to work. I know I'm not your father, but I love you dearly. I'm not, I know I'm not your mother. I love you dearly. So how do you foster those conversations? Um, I, like you said, I'm, I agree with what you said. You need to be established when you when you first date them. And sometimes if you don't establish it from the, from the first time, it gets get difficult to to transition that. So it, it it's, it, I never, um, I, I've seen it where it's been done, where the, the stepfather and the mother get along and picks up the kids and they all do it. I have seen that, so. So it can't work. It can work. Okay, it can, it okay. Can. So Monica said, I don't have a stepdaddy. He's my daddy. So how does your biological father feel about that, Monica, if he's in your life with you saying that you don't have a stepdad that, that's your dad? And that's that's great. That's perfect. You know, we want everyone to feel love. And I think that's what children want. They want to feel love. They want to feel love from everyone. You know, and I do think when you put that word step in front of it, that like block some of the relationships that you can have with that person. <laughs> okay, you have anything to add? <laughs> so how did, do you think there's a time frame on when the bond should happen between you and the stepchild? I don't think there's a time frame. I think you have to let nature take its course. I think you have to um, build a relationship with the child and the mother's well. And they both see that you actually um, say what you are. And because you constantly have to prove yourself because they look at you. If you say, I care, and then one thing you do wrong, then that's when that, you know, that wall will break down. And you're like, well, you say you care, but you need this. So you constantly um, applying for the job, I say. Oh, so it's like, why do you feel like being a step parent is harder than parenting? Because I know that was our topic. Yeah, be, out with it. yeah. Because they, some of the kids that you, they, it goes back to you're not my dad, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of like 
how can you tell me something if you weren't, you know? If you're not my dad. If you're not my dad. And also, it, it takes, in order to get that, it takes two. It has to be the, the stepfather and the mother has to come together in some type of way to, to, to intercede to make that bond. Better. To make that connection. Make that connection. Okay. Okay. So what if the that, that custodial parent is not encouraging on the part of making that bun much smoother? What happens then? How do you think that should be handled? Do you talk to the custodial parent? Uh, do you talk, get the child on your own and speak to them? Because you, sometimes you probably feel like you're at a battle because um, the child is a certain way because the custodian parent is not encouraging, but you understand that, that person, that's that person's child. Yeah, but the only thing I can say is you just got to pray. Just got to ask God to fix the situation um, to whatever seemed fit for him in his, in his order, not your order. So because you don't ever want to come between a woman and a kid or a man and his kid because at the end of the day, that's, that's all disaster. That's that's a disaster waiting to happen. So I my suggestion would be just to pray and ask God to uh, fix the situation or whatever need to be done. So how do you feel about discipline? Do you think that a step parent should have the right to discipline the child? To a certain degree. To a certain degree. I, I don't think a, um, a man should, um, I'm gonna say, punish a child with, uh, as if it was his own. I don't think- But if you do that, are you separating the two? Because you said they shouldn't discipline, and I'm just asking. Well, to a certain degree, as far as like, if I say, you mean like a belt, something like a belt, brutal. yes, like okay. a belt. Now, I, if I say, well, she she's on the car, she can't go outside for two days. Okay, that's a different thing. That's discipline. It's that's discipline. discipline. Yeah, okay. but I don't think a man should put his hands on a, a girl. It's not his. That's what about a boy? I think he should. So, so yeah, the roles are different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you're saying probably not a man, not a woman, because you don't want to cross that line of being caught up in being bothered, saying you harmed her, and it can get to yeah. allegedly yeah. certain ways. Is that why you say what? Yeah. Girl? So uh, because he, a, a male, need that that male influence to see. Because I've seen where women have actually punched their kid, but they don't, they don't bother. It okay. Don't, you know. So. It, it just depends, you know, on that. I, I just, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want a guy, I don't care about him punishing my daughter, but I wouldn't want to put his hand on my daughter. That's a little biased. I, I know it. However, right. should you discuss that first with the couples? Before, when you're dating, you know this person has kids. So that's something you discuss first about disciplining the child, how that relationship's going to work. So I know someone talked about boundaries, but do you really, do you think we really as people have those conversations or we just go in relationships and then whatever happened, happens. And then we try to figure out like, don't touch my child, it's not your child. Don't do this, don't do that when you're already in it. I don't think we have a conversation. We should. Do you think we should start having we, those we conversations? We should have those conversations. And, and, and I think that'll make it better if you have a conversation. I think that um, uh, um, the male, if the father's active in the child's life, he needs to sit down and, and, and talk with him on certain things like that. And also, the step parent needs to, if the dad has punched her a certain way, he needs to adhere to that as well. So in other words, if if, if the dad, if she's over the dad house, and that's like she can't go out for two days, and she come home, and it's not the second day, then she needs to be still punched. Everybody needs to be on the same page. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Agree with that. And, and that, you know, and, and what I try to do is, um, I don't, when, if a sister, uh, something come before me, like if my stepdaughter come and say, well, can I go outside? I always ask, what did your mother say? Because sometimes they can come in and ask you something, and then you go against, and you're not knowing. Right. You know, so, Absolutely. So. so Freddie said, time frame is when you show love. I know that was a question that was asked earlier. Monica said, I feel he has nothing really to say. I'll call him daddy too. But the one that has been has been there the most gets the most in my eyes. I, I agree with you. So you agree with that? I agree with that because you, you, to me, your dad is the one that's there for you. Your father is the one there for you. It's the difference between father and dad. Father means, to me, father means more um, 
Um, it's a bun. It's, yeah, it's father. Anybody can be a dad, but can you be a father? Okay, so what's the difference between the two? What's the difference between being a dad and being a father? A dad is just to me. A dad is just a word. Because people say that's my baby that, dad. Yeah, that yeah. But see, a father means that he's protective. I'm I'm I'm, I'm like I'm 48 years old. When I'm around my father, I feel so good inside. He like the father, son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, because <laughs> I know that he whatever I need as far as protection. Right? I'm not talking about material. Right, I'm right, gonna get it. right. Gotcha. So you don't feel like. Well, do you feel like a stepdaddy can do that as well? He can. Okay. But, okay. The, but the child has to be receptive of that. I agree. He, I agree. He can do that. But, okay. Yeah. So Freddie said, everyone must respect each other. I agree that the woman deal with the girls and the man deal with the boys. Okay. Deb said, if they're under my roof, I'm whooping my kids, step kids, no, neighbor kids, neighbor kids, across the street, damn, I'm with you, and they in my house, they getting their butt whooped. <laughs> I, I, I agree with her on, on that part of it. I think the woman should be able to whoop the, key, the, the girls and the, and the uh, boys. It's just a different when a man put his hands on a, a girl. It's just so much that you can... That, Cross that line. Yeah, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. Because that's not your child. Even when, even when. But you keep saying that I understand that that's not your child. And Key and I have these conversations. Matter of fact, we just had it last night. It's like I think when you say that's not my child, so you you're building a wall there. You know, I understand the discipline. I understand that you know, it not just, everybody it, wants you putting their kids. It's just, it's just I, a, I agree it's, with that. It's just a thin line. You. It, um, it, it, at the end of the day, even though you don't step parent, it's still it's a it's found it's a thin line that you have to watch because there's a lot of stuff that can go along with that. You know what I'm saying? You you can CPS can get involved. The dad might not like you and he might want to call and, and it's a lot of stuff so you wanna to try to You're just saying it may turn into something, something because they, they're yeah. angry at you yeah. and they can turn it against that male yeah. Yeah. because and, make something alleged because i'm sure we've heard a story yeah. i've heard of a story where it, uh, the child did say something about the father and the yeah. father matter of fact is in jail today it's, it's and just it like, didn't happen like it's that. just like me when i'm at home uh um when even i get out the shower or whatever thing that nature, i make sure i protect myself mm -hmm. i put Absolutely. my clothes on i put you know i don't i try not i do my best to do that mm -hmm. because you just have to be careful because if the kid go over to the dad and they talking and then they're seeing something that is not and you, you know, putting yourself in certain situations. So, right. But back to those boundaries, like one spoke about and having that conversation, do you think that would alleviate some of the issues on how we discipline the, our steps, children, if we talk about it? Yeah. If, you know, if, if, it's, if it's discussed during the dating phase, yeah. it's not like the, the kids go away because we got married we were dating now we're married but we would have had those conversations you already know how we discipline yeah if if, if you had that from from the words say go then that other parent would know okay this guy is all right and he he you know he's okay um i don't think that he would do anything to harm my child uh, um things of that nature you know and also it depends on the custodial parent how she relays your, you guys relationship to him if, if she you know, say, hey, this guy is good to my child, and you know, just kind of, you know, set boundaries and let him know. And I think that's a part of it as well. So. But shouldn't that be established up front? Yeah. Because it's oh, yeah. like if you don't get along with the children, then I don't see how you're gonna get along with the wife. Correct. It you should, know, it should. because if a woman puts a man before her children, and it's like, oh, well, you got to get over it because I'm gonna marry him or I'm gonna date him anyway. Correct. Or you're just in your feelings because you don't want me to be happy. Correct. So if you are, well, not you per se, but if a man is faced with those type of obstacles, do you still get married to that woman or do you still date that woman knowing that she's always going to put her children first? Um, I don't think you should. If yeah, you know, should. I don't think you should because if you know that, that that's what she's going to do and, you know, uh, biblically, you know, how uh, what the words say that it has to be, but if you know that she's going to do that, there might be a recipe for disaster. I agree. 
but we don't though. We we still go ahead and get married. Society still goes. Yes, that's we, why we're in a lot of yes, issues we in. Yeah, right? we do things we not support. We, we shouldn't. Do. We overlook a lot of stuff. You so think, do you think that would ever change when people would? Hey, I shouldn't go for it because yeah. it's not gonna get any better. Yeah, yeah that, that once you do things in life, you shouldn't repeat it again. Once you you know you go through certain things in life, you, I I don't say make a mistake or whatever you want to call it. You, you you should learn from the last relationship or anything in life that you've done. You should learn from that mm -hmm. and try not to make that mistake again. Great. Right. Yeah. So what happens is you, may, you marry, now you're in it. Do you tough it out and keep going? Yeah, because the reason why you tough it out because you made a vow to God. You didn't make a vow to man. I made a vow to God. So if I made that vow to God, I got to pray and ask God as the man to hear whatever situations are me. I gotta take the leadership role of and say, God, you know what, what's what, and to fix it, that's just, that just me. So your thing is you believe in the power of prayer? Yes, I believe in the power of prayer. I'm not a pastor, but I do believe in the power of prayer. Okay. So let's go back to some of the comments. So Dab say, my fiance did say that he, what am I missing? Because he's the boy. He did need to quote him, but he's a boy. And I what is that? And I lecture, lecture. lecture him and that will work on on a girl. Boys need their butt whooped though. <laughs> because he's a boy. Because he's a boy. Oh, okay. So you feel boys really need the butt whoop and the and the girls get to get the lecturing. It's only um, a girl. Right. Sometimes she might be off the chain. And Helen McKenzie said amen to it. So she agrees with that. Okay, and Freddie said the Bible say your husband should come first. Well, Freddie, we know that, but does that really happen? You know, because we become mama bears and it's like, oh, that's my child. I have to protect my child. And so you just, I think it's just a mother's instinct, especially if you are a true mother. I mean, we have some mothers that are not mothers. Like he just said, the difference between being a father and being a dad. Right, so if you are a mother, you wanna do all that you can to protect your child. And sometimes you don't see that you're crossing some boundaries there, right? You don't see that you're causing obstacles for that step parent to try to discipline that child or try to build a bridge with, with, that, with the child. You know, because I think as long as we keep saying step, it's going to always be division. Right, so long as we keep saying this is my stepchild, and I know you mentioned before uh, the interview, Brett, you don't use the term step. You're like, this is my daughter, no. you know. No, um, um, no I, I, I don't like using it, but you have, to me, I think you have to do to make that child feel comfortable. That if 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 okay. saying stepdad makes that child feel comfortable, you have to do that. If if saying another thing, another way, make the child comfortable, you have to do what makes that child come to me. But what I do, I, I, you know, I say this is my daughter. This is what I say, you know. I agree. And so Tracy Lamar Griffith said, there is a thing as overprotective for the kid and the kid knows that. Oh, yeah. oh they know that. And they, and I can elaborate on, because sometimes kids are, um, you know, I've seen it where kids know a certain thing that their mother do and they'll play, they'll play that they situation. They pitch you guys against each yeah, other? they will. And, and it's not that they do it intentionally, just that they- No, they're doing it intentionally. Well, <laughs> some, 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 <laughs> some, you know, some, you know, you know, so yeah, that's, a, that's a thing too, so. But we probably understand too that mothers, if you get with someone that, that's been there, that child, that mother a long time, it has a tendency to probably feel that they're overprotective of their child even though they probably want the love of the man. Uh, and I'm sure there are single fathers out there as well who's been with that child and that woman comes in or, and a man comes in. That's all you know, it's been those two together. So like the, like it was mentioned, I don't think they try to be hover bear <laughs> over the kid, but it turns out that be way. I think where the line gets crossed when you start telling that person almost as is us against you right and that goes and that, to what antonio just said key what you just said antonio edwards said the kid act out and play parents against each other oh, yeah. Yeah. what you were just saying yeah 
And that's what we've got to learn how to stop doing because we want our kids to have the best life there that we want them to have. We also want to love them at all, at, by any means necessary because that's your kid. But I think sometimes just in many relationships when you're dating someone who has kids, it's kind of hard because you don't want to walk that fine line. But that's when you start having them conversations because when you do go to the next level, being married, that child doesn't go away. So when you don't have that that connection of saying, talk about how should we be, how should you address the child, how should you not make the person, because you can also make the step parent, not even just the, the kid. The, the mate can make the step parent feel a certain type of way. Because I feel like it's you, then it's me. It's you guys over here, then it's us. So we got to find a way, how do you make that that connection, I'm sure it's hard because you're not thinking that, oh, I'm not trying to come off that way, but it's been you two so long, but you want this love to come in, but then you still try to make that step-parent feel a step-parent to you and the kid. Do, do you, do you know how, how that can be fixed? How? I'll say it again, i said say it the whole time in life. If we do things in order of the Bible templates, if you do it that way, and your child is going to feel the Bible say God first, husband second, everybody else. If you do it in that order, the kid's going to feel the love. It's like a, it's like a, a volcano. When it erupts, it goes down, and then it, everybody's going to feel it. So if you do it, if 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 you do it in the order that way, in the love that the husband is God giving to the man, the man is giving it to the family. Sure. And then it's given to the wife, and then the kids gonna fit it all. I believe, I believe you. But however, we know more horror stories than we know of peace stories. So, how do you fix the horror story, though, Brent? How do you fix the horror story? I don't know one way but prayer. That's one thing. I'm, I'm just y'all. <laughs> we came to take them and choke them. <laughs> and, and, and shake them and check and choke them again. <laughs> so Tracy Lamar and Griffith just said, remember the Bible teaches that all kids have sin nature and must be taught good. Too many parents allow kids to raise themselves. Mm. 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 Preach Tracy. <laughs> oh, another one for you, Brent. So if you have certain values. And this mother or that father has taught their child to be a certain way. You don't believe in that way. How do you handle scenarios in that kind of case? Well, what I had to learn to do is um, kind of just stay in my lane to a certain degree or certain things that if she's used to doing things a certain way, uh, if you want peace in your home, you're going to have to kind of roll with the punches. Kind of do what the way she was doing it. Because when you come in and try to do it, You're right. they, it creates more because that kid looked like, well, he trying to do this because he don't like me or whatever. I'm just saying, uh, um, you know, I, I'm i old school. Um, I, I believe in, you know, the kids been in bed about nine, you know, um, you know, and the parents is up. I'm just old school, but uh, if everything is different. But is, are you talking about forcing a child to doing something? Or you're talking about let's discuss how we should do. Let's, let's, I think discuss, discussing is better because when you force it, it creates division. Exactly, but you said you rather just stay in your lane. Yeah, and so, just keep the peace well, in the house, well, even though that irritates. Well, you. if certain things irritate me, I might say uh, I'm, I've never said in front of the, the the kid. I might go and say, hey, you know, so 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 so. I'm glad you brought that up. So when there is a dis when there is a disconnect or when there is a disagreement, that's not happening from the stepchild, right? You go to that parent and try to speak to her about their he or she about their child. Yeah, we we I I, I try to do that. Sometimes it it you know don't happen. I pretty much you know my wife dis her kids, and I just pretty much you know sit you hands and, off. Yeah. She says she disciplined her kids. Aren't that those are y'all children. Well, you correct, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I really don't discipline per se. I might say, uh, like, do you hear your mama say, don't do that, something like that. Okay, yeah. so you are reinforced. Yeah, like what the, okay. I let so my wife do the discipline. Okay. But you're like, reinforced. Okay. Kind of, okay. You know, and you're okay with that, right? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. okay. Is that what you guys discuss, or you just 
played your role. You just, just stepped, played my, just you just stepped into the role like that. Okay. So how many okay. stepchildren do you have? Uh, right now I have two. You have two. What are those ages? Um, 18 and 7. Okay. Okay. So how long have you been in their lives? Um, the, the baby girl, she was three. And the older girl, she was, I think, about 13. Oh, so you've been in their life for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got another comment. Um, Tracy says, structure is key to any kid's development. The kids actually look for discipline as an act of real love. I 100% agree with that. You know, because kids, they know when you, are, when you love them. Mm -hmm. You know, so they know the difference between the two. They know if you're loving on them or if you're just being me. So if you create that structure, that's going to follow them for the rest of their life. Right. You know, so if you're that parent that you just sit back and you're just like, oh, well, I'm going to let them figure it out on, this, on their own, you're setting them up for disaster. Because this world, no matter what you're doing, there are rules. You know, there are rules by everything we do. There are rules when you go to work. So by you being a step parent, you still have to enforce rules in your household. You know, and that's creating that structure that Tracy was talking about. Yeah, that's, I just, like I said, I just pretty much, you know, my wife does this one, and okay. I just pretty much, if, you know, uh, I, I try to let her handle that part of it, okay. and she does a good job of that, so I really don't have to. You don't have to no, intercede there. No, because so. she, does she does an excellent job on that. I'm just kind of like, I sit back and I just stay in my lane. If she asks me something, then, you know, I do it, but she pretty much does that part of it. Okay. You know, I think that would be hard for me. Well, I think that would be hard for me. Well, just hard. Stand, like, cause I would want us to be able to communicate on how we would dis discipline them. Whether it's one of those where I don't discipline or I discipline by voice opposed to physical. It's just, we are a family. And I know a lot of times we've been saying about the word step. I don't think people try to say step. I just think that's what we just know as society. We have a new word. New word now. Some people say bonus family. Uh, we've gotten so some people have gotten so to the point they have put all the petties behind them, and you don't know who to step, who the bonus, who the ex, who the new wife, who the you know I mean because people find dynamics are, are so different now. And I just always believe when we're talking about is about the kids. And you know when I get on this part about people always tell me it's about the kids, about the kids, about the kids. Then I get to the point of why the adults can move, remove pettiness to make it about the kids. So we know that children most of the time want their parents together. Correct. That's just human nature. But that still should be me as a step, that person as a step, find a way to help encourage that child to make that person feel welcome. Because you can, the child can be uncomfortable, and so is the step parent to be uncomfortable. Because some step kids are hell on wheels. Oh, yeah. Some step parents, you could have. You can put them in a box and ship them somewhere as well. Well, well, I, I've known it. I think you have to do what's comfortable for your relationship. And if whatever works for you guys, I think that's what you have to do. Right. Because some, I've seen it where some guys will throw their weight around because they still have feelings involved for the other young lady. Mm -hmm. They want you to know that. Right. Oh, you can't stop me, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Uh, I've seen that. And that's what I mean, the pettiness. Yeah. But, you know what I'm but, saying? But that's because people are not uh, sound here. You know. So how do you think that should be handled? Like if your stepdaughter is, well, this, your stepdaughter goes to her custodial parent, i.e. father or mother or whatever, and she comes back and tells you, oh, Miss Susie was yelling at me. Miss Susie said this to me. Miss Susie said that to me. Do you think that you should take that up with Miss Susie, or do you should you have a conversation with the custodial parent? I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate first. I'm gonna investigate because you have to be careful because, like you said, once again, that kid can go back and fabricate things. So I'm gonna investigate and find out first what happened. I'm gonna go back and say, hey, this was brought to me. Um, I don't know. And find out and then see how it works. But again, like she like G is asking, who are you speaking to first? If so you say you're gonna investigate, so you gotta to talk to someone. I'm, I'm, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to what the child told me 
Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the parent. So what if the parent tells you, yes, I did tell Lil Jane to sit over there and don't say anything because she was running up and down the stairs. She was doing all these things. She was just out of control. So I'm not going to have a problem with it. If you, as long as you're doing something that's best for that child okay. and it's in the best interest of that child, I'm good. Okay. So uh, Tracy just said some adults alienate their relationships for the kids. It's done before you start. It takes everybody on deck. Research everything. <laughs> right. I agree. Right. Because we know some children that will come back and tell you, oh, she told me I was ugly. Uh, she told me Maybe that. Then you, you know, then you call in the custodial parent and like, why is she over there telling my child what to do? Why is she but telling him you, what to do? That's where you as a parent, you got to be grown up and understand if your child is capable of lying to you. Well, you know children are capable of lying. Well, I mean, I'm just saying. Is you trying to understand, do you think reform that? If you think the one is that your child will lie to you. Your child, of course. Especially if they, if they don't like the other guy or the other woman, right. they're going to fabricate some stuff. And you, by being the parent, you, we are so protective of our kids. We're going right. to jump right head in and not ask and say, you can just say, uh, what Susan said, this was said. Mm -hmm. I'm just calling. I'm not, you know, out of concern. But when you know Susie is lying, uh, you know, Susie told you to sit over there in the corner. Are you really having a conversation with that step parent? <laughs> because if I told you to sit in the corner, I didn't beat you. I didn't hit you. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not did something was, like that. I'm not. Something like that. I'm not finna call her. And why you make Susie sit in the corner? But we know some parents do. Well, we know some that's, parents that call and be like, look, why do you tell my daughter to sit in the corner? If you got Problem with her, you take that but, up with her but, daddy, and you but, take that up with but the But that mom. goes back to if if everything was established from the get go, when something happened like that, you're not worried. It's just, it's just like when you 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 drop your kid off over to one of the aunt's house, you you're not worried. You, okay, I'm not worried. I'm gonna leave my kid here. I might leave a few dollars. I'm not from the car. I know he with an aunt, so I know he's okay. You see what I'm saying? So it has to be established from the get go. Tamir said, "I will say this." If you don't want your child disciplined, don't bring them to my house, period. <laughs> to me, I think you forgot the team. Period. Okay. Three teams. <laughs> Four teams. <laughs> if yeah. I can feed them, I should be able to do it. I, I agree. And right. if you trust me enough to drop your child off at my house, you know that I have the best interest for this child. But some kids just do the donkey. You know, they just want to act crazy. They just want to. And some kids are not disciplined at home. So, you know, that's a whole nother issue because you can turn cartwheels and flip over the sofa at your mama house. When you come over here, you can't do that. Well, what you need to do is you know the child like that. Don't let them come to the house. But what if that's your stepdaughter? What if that's your... Well, that's <laughs> what if, no, uh, it's not Tracy. different. It's just what I'm saying. That's why I say it's that hard... It's that... It's the hard... It's a hard situation because... Everybody feel their child is the bomb.com, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just have a problem sometimes when you're bringing love with someone that's not their biological, they're not the biological parent, and we have so many different rules. I don't think a person have a problem not discipline child, but this is not all about physical discipline. Yeah. But when you're in a home and you can't tell that other person's child anything, I just think that's a problem. That causes oh, yeah. issues. She made, she made that causes that. issues. Nothing wrong with staying in your lane, but it's just like we gotta coexist in this house together. Why can't we be on the same page? We do know a lot of people do not have those conversations up front. And if you decided to bring this man or woman in your home while your child, you trust them enough to do that, but you don't trust them enough to say anything to your kid. I just that's the part that always baffles me. And so we have a comment from the group. It says Tracy. Tracy said, kids are emotional and put results before the truth. Know the kid you birth. So you know when little Johnny is lying oh, to you. Absolutely, Tracy. You know, you like, girl, don't sit your butt down. Let nobody say that to you. Antonio said, when you remarry, you stay with the wife and her kids, but your kids depend on the relationship with the ex. They're doing for the other kids instead of them. 
I treat my stepkids like they're my own. Woo! That was a mouthful, Antonio. Woo. Okay, it's like and see that's another one. If you have kids, your kids are not at home with the mother. Right. If it's a mother, your kids are not there. Their kids are there. So you can't tell your that child anything, but then your kids come over there, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. Or you don't spend as much time with your kids because whatever reason. That's what we gotta learn how to get out of. So that's why I'm just curious. How do we stop the madness? Right. And Tamil said these <laughs> these new generational parents are crazy. I got my butt whooped. I know, you know, it's like we got away from the box and spread the rod. Spare the spoil the child, right? So but everything is not about a whooping though. You but you, you every, can, every you kid doesn't need, need a kid. When need you, a whooping when though. You need a every now and then kid need a I call it touch of reality. <laughs> I think kids need a whooping. I, I, every child does need that, but that's not the issue with the whole discipline thing. I know people don't want you to physically touch their child. Some people don't want you to say no. anything well, to well, well, their well, child. Right. Right. You can go in there and say, hi, Brent. Did you do your homework? Or, hey, don't, don't play on the couch. Go there and sit down. Why you got her saying something to my dear? Right. 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 That's, 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 that's my point. How do we? How do you move forward from stuff like that? That's the person you got to move forward. From. You 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 have you have to be you have to be almost crazy to think that you're gonna have somebody in your home and you can't tell that child anything. And like I said, everybody's not the big bear wolf. Everybody's not trying to not like your kid. No one's like I'm talking about that person. They love your kid to death. They know it's not their kid. They are in their lane, but. If you leave me with your child and I'm here by myself and you flip it on my couch, no, I ain't I should doing get, it. You should be. We don't, yeah, we you don't should do that you should over here. You should be. No, so what you're going to do is take the Johnny with you. No, no, no. I can't do it. You can take your mom with you. If you in this house, you're going to do what I say to I don't care what your mama told you. I don't care what your daddy told you. You in my care right now. So anything else, no, nah, baby, I'm going to take him to work with you. Yeah. Because he's not going to flip over my sofa in here. Yeah. He's not going to walk on top of my table. He's not going to eat in the front room. He's going to eat at the table. He's not going to walk all over the house with you. He's not just going to do that. We have rules in here. Right. And so I think when when the step parent tries to enforce those, even if the mother's doing that at home, she's going to be pissed at you because she's like, well, why you let her tell him what to do? Well, that's your job. You're the one that's because supposed to they be have, with him. Because they have a let go. Their feelings, they feel the that's the issue. That's the real issue. That's the real issue. That's that the real they issue. They haven't let go because if if there was any inkling that they can, you know, some of us slide back and creep with your baby mama. Right. I, I, you you done done that. <laughs> and, and, and so now that a guy another guy come in, he can't slide. He can't come over there and live no more like he used to be able to do. Have his cake and ice cream to a vice versa, man or woman, whatever which way it is. Mm -hmm. But so now you've taken that away. So when you take that away, it is like they wanna, you know, woof, wanna show you, uh, since you can't do this, okay, I'm gonna do this. You know. And that's a bunch of BS yeah, all yeah. day, every day, because like I said, I just thank God I never had to go through that. You know, I, I don't know what I would do, you know, but and I also have a problem with a step parent trying to remove that child out the way because she or he don't want to be bothered with a stepchild. That's that's the, you know, if, 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 if that was the case, you'd rather run to the heater. But some men do it, that's, some men that, they're like, that, okay, well, I'm. Because that's not a that's not a man because it's a package deal. Well, some men like okay. Well, my wife don't want this outside child, so what I'm gonna do is remove myself from the equation and make this child go off on their own. No, it's not. It's not right. I, absolutely, it's, it's not, not right. right. But we know right. that that happens, well, right? Yeah, they do. They do do that. That's that's you know. So that, that becomes a parents' issue, right? Yeah. That, that that's the parents' issue. So that's what I'm saying. We have to learn how to weigh, learn, find a way, should I say, to really make it about the kids. Mm -hmm. We do understand that kids are going to be kids. Some kids, they just cannot handle the disconnect. Those kind of kids, you do have to pray and keep working. I mean, you, like you said, you pray from all, but that type of child where they just can't handle their mom and dad not being together and they not really that, 
my but, bosses but, and doing crazy stuff. You can understand what they. I could probably deal with them better. But then the one where they're just a bratty kid, and my mate allows that foolishness. That's just what I have a problem with because that's the case. You should y'all should stay together. But, but I, I I think one way how you can fix that if you incorporate you guys together and they can't see that you guys incorporated together and i think that'll make the transition smoother you know what i'm saying if other words if if look kind of has a, a, a recital and make the step plan feel a part of that and if they can't see that you, you guys are together that you can't be divided is you see what I'm saying? They see the so it's not being a cohesive unit. Yes, but even really though yeah. he's not, even though he he has to be cohesive unit, even though he's not the real mother. I mean, she's not the real mother or the real father. You got to make him feel that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when that child sees that, that child is like, okay, I can't come between my stepdad. I can't come between my yeah. stepmother. Absolutely, that's that's the overall goal for yes. all of us to get along. All of us, right? So. We just want to say thank you all for listening to us. Keep it, I'm sorry. What, what Debs? I'm sorry. One rule. What you say? My lights go out at 8 p.m. for everyone in the house. What you do at mom? Her rule. <laughs> yeah, they come to your house. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> Lord, Cowboys don't go off at 10 o'clock. I'm like, damn, you really at least get nine? <laughs> nine? No. <laughs> but what did Brittany say? You do what works for your yeah. household. <laughs> and that's what she's going to work for her household. No, damn, we're not going to go. That's what I'm talking about because you tell them 8 yeah. o'clock. And I, and I think the other issue is, too, before we close out this, we have a tendency, I don't care who you are, good, bad, and different, you bring your ways of growing up into your parenting, and sometimes it doesn't mix with the same people. Step, not step. So you can imagine how it is when I want to go. Some you said nine, she's talking about eight. You can imagine how you're saying like I was, I grew up. You didn't leave the house with the bed. You don't don't close the door. You don't own this door around here. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> I don't leave my home without my bed made up. So if you bring somebody else in, if you're just asking a stepchild. <laughs> I, I had to learn it. Too. <laughs> I mean, I was living by myself, and I would get up out the bed, and I'm like, "What? Well, this up. I'm going back." Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, oh, now, no. Now, 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 my wife, she's like, "Make the bed up." So I make it up, but it might not be to her expectation. But it's but made. It, but it's made. <laughs> but that's things you pass on to your kids. So that's what I'm saying. If you, in your case. If, if you if you or I if you, if we were the people, it'll be a situation where you don't make up the bed. I'm telling your child is gonna make up the bed. Well, our dad don't make up the bed. See, that's the issues right there. Because yeah. you're doing how you want to do. I'm doing how I'm taught. And sometimes it does be conflict when it, it comes it to dishes. It can be a tug of war. It can be a tug of war. <laughs> you don't go to bed without the dishes. Don't don't leave those dishes in the sink. Right. Don't so leave it can be yeah. it can be it. simple things that you're doing with a step a step child. That's nothing even has nothing to do with any kind of physical thing at all. Yeah, we used to throw the dishes away because we didn't want to wash them. You know, <laughs> I'm like, let me let me throw this away. So, oh no, yeah, I don't want to wash no dishes. So, in closing, we have one last comment from Tamia. She said, "I'm with you, G. I didn't have the problems. And I've helped raise my husband's children, and he helped me raise my boys." That's wonderful to me, and I think we, we're ending on a positive note. That's good. Because that's how it should be. And so we just want to say for our group fans, or our group friends that are joining us for the first time, we hope that you guys come back. This is a show where we talk about real-life topics. We have different topics every week. Um, so they're just real life. I know I posted where we're going to talk about something with singles. But this, this subject was just tugging at me. So I reached out to Key and I was like, hey, God is telling me that we need to talk about step parenting, you know, and I'm not a step parent. So I just wanted to, you know, have this conversation with, with a broader, broader audience, right? And I wanted to get a male's perspective and Brent was willing to do that for us. So with that being said, Key and I just want to say thank you for taking time out on your Sunday to visit and listen to Chat and Chew. Uh, Debs, I'm sorry, I know that was the last comment, but Debs said, and they have to be a 49 oh, fan. No. <laughs> no, Cowboy, Cowboy, Cowboy.
Super Bowl. We going to the Super Bowl. Mark oh, my word. Lord, we they going say to that every year, man. We are going, man. <laughs> Damn, are like you talking about the step parent or you talking about the step child? <laughs> Which one is going? Because he already in the bed. He or she already in the bed by eight. So they can't even see the game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you gotta be in the bed by eight and the Oh, house. But again, we want to thank you guys for tuning in with Chat and Chew with Key. And G. It's Chat and Chew with Key. And G. I'm G. And I'm Key. And we're Chat and Chew with Brent today. Thank you. Brent is a Cowboys fan, and the Cowboys played today. And Brent said he left five minutes here to make this film. So we appreciate you. We appreciate you guys. So we appreciate you guys so much that we want you to drop your cash out name in. We may just bless you on this wonderful Sunday. Yes. So share this video so that, you know, more people can drop their cash app name. And you'll never, you never know what Kia and I might do for you during the week. So with that being said, we'll see you all next Sunday at 4 p.m. Central. It's Chat and Chew with G and Key. It's Chat and Chew with Key and G. Bye, friends. Bye, guys. See you all next week. Don't forget to drop your cash app. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.